Hello everyone, welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I am your host. And it is a wet, wet, wet Friday here in Louisiana, but the work still got to get done. I know I said I was going to go live at 10, but I came into the store this morning and it looks like the um, rain may have knocked out our power, air conditioning, whatever. So I'm going to have to deal with that. So I was like, let me go ahead and get this live done because I know I'm going to have some other things that I'll be dealing with throughout the day. That's one of the things that goes along with entrepreneurship. You wake up every day. You don't know from day to day which, what's going to be presented to you. So you have to be prepared to move accordingly. Okay. So let me just say this. Um, oh, if my eyebrows grease, it's because of my micro, microblading. Thank you, Beehive, for this beautiful set. Um, get with Ashley at Beehive. And I just want to make sure. I'm, okay, that's everything. Okay, so I was up and I was in prayer yesterday and today. And I'm going to just say this because sometimes, a lot of times, people don't understand when you, when you, Pray and you say, Lord, use me as a vessel. I'm not saying sometimes we don't know what we're asking for, but I'm going to say this. Sometimes I don't think that we are aware of how weary we could get being a vessel. Because a lot of times when you a vessel, you start to take on, and not intentionally, but you take on issues here there, the other so when you're reading in the inbox when you're reading yes you read a lot of success but at the same time you get a lot of things that that that's heartbreaking as well um but i know i said okay we're talking about april showers april showers april showers and the lord was like but i need you to talk about this because you got a lot of people who follow you that are hurting. And when you ask to be used as a vessel, the best thing you could do is be transparent. Because see, if people feel like you fake in any type of way, you lose our credibility. So I say, Lord, I'm willing to put me out there. I'm willing to talk about my sex life. Because in the beginning, all I talked about was my sex life. I never talked about my marriage or my relationship. But as I grew and the Lord started to reveal to me my purpose and why I am put here, I started to talk more and more and more about marriage and my marriage personally and the ups and the downs and so on and so forth. And so often when I'm doing sex coaching, so often when I'm here in the store, I have, and I'm talking about men and women because marriage for me is man and woman. I'm not knocking same sex. The thing is, I know the same issues go on in same sex, but in order for me to give my perspective, I have to give it the way I see it. Okay. A lot of times. I get one person that comes in and they have this uh, idea of how they want their spouse to behave. They have this idea of, you know, she should be doing this. She should be doing that. She should, she, 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 she should, but she not. And then I have to ask the question, sir, what happened? How did it get to this point? Because let me tell you something. And this is what I know to be true. When we go to the altar, everybody goes to the altar with the best intentions. Everybody goes to the altar with this picture of perfection, this white picket fence, this house on the hill, the children, the dog, and all of the glitz and glam that goes along with marriage. This is how we go in and viewing it, feeling like this is going to be our marriage. But then sometimes something happens. Not sure what the something is because the something can be anything. And what happens is a person becomes broken. I'm talking about infidelity because that is what I hear the most about. I constantly hear about infidelity. 
Meaning people can't be faithful, truthful. Affairs happen on some type of level, whether it's a virtual affair, whether it's an emotional affair, whether it's a physical affair. It's something. And what happens is, and the Lord, my God, woke me up this morning and told me, go to the store, get two mirrors. I had no idea I was going to be able to find a black one and a white one. Get two mirrors, and I need you to bring a hammer to work with you. Because I need you to show them what brokenness looks like. See, when your wife looking in the mirror, and she looking at her reflection, she is looking at the perfect version of your marriage. And she's going in it, white, pure. Yes, she has imperfections. But she never feels like her imperfections are bad enough to make you hurt her. Step out on her. Start entertaining somebody else. She never feels like what she got going on is that bad. Because she mouthy. Or like some men like to say, because she don't listen. Because for a long time, I was told that I didn't listen. But I didn't understand what not listening meant. I didn't understand it. Because my thing is, I'm doing what you say do. So when you say I'm not listening, I don't understand. But a lot of times, the not listening is, you're not necessarily going along with his plan. Because we were raised as American women, especially black women, to have a mind of our own and think for ourselves. So the thing is, our husband can present us with a plan, but we still have our own plan. Right? So, for whatever reason, you didn't meet the mark in his book. Now, I'm not saying that you didn't meet the mark, ma'am. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is in his book, you didn't meet the mark. So it was justification for him to do whatever it is that he felt like he was going to do. He just needed a reason to justify it. And what happens is <coughs> brokenness. God himself told me to show it to you just like this. See, when Infidelity happens when cheating happens. This is what it looks like. You can't put this shit back together. It can't go back to how it was. And what happens is the person has to make a decision if they going to stay in the marriage or if they going to leave the marriage. Right? And what happens is, believe it or not, most women choose to stay and fight. I don't knock a woman for her reasoning. I don't. Again, I'm not saying that all men cheat. I'm not saying that only men cheat. But majority of my following is women. I'm not saying that they don't because I'm, I'm about to break it down to you because I have two different testimonies, two different ones. But I had to show you what brokenness looks like because the thing is, now that she's broken and this what you left with, you want this though. Because see, you don't understand that this is what you done created in your life. This is what you done created in your marriage. But you want it to look like this. You don't want to have to deal with what the fuck you created. Now, thank God he is a restorer. Thank God he is able. See, I was supposed to be talking about April showers. I was supposed to be talking about April showers hands of God. Because I have this stuff planned out ahead of time. But God himself was like, not today. Not today. Because you have too many people that are broken. And you need to do this video because you need to save some people. 
Mean the people who ain't been experienced the brokenness shit. Because if they understood what the brokenness does, then maybe they will think twice about their actions. See, when you're dealing with this level of brokenness, a lot of times what you don't understand is this your marriage. This this it. This what you're going to deal with until the duration of your marriage ends, whether it's through death do you part or whether it's through divorce. This is the lens that you're going to be looking at it through. Unless you decide to go get help. Unless you decide to deal with the issues. Unless you decide to get deep in prayer. To really, to really make a change in your life. But this happened. I'm going to say that this happened in year one of marriage. Y'all decided. We're going to work through our problems. We're going to work through it. Right? Because a lot of people do choose to work through it. But then you have other things that go on. Things that trigger. Go back and watch my video about triggers. Things that trigger. Whether it's directly triggering or indirectly triggering. They're triggers. And what happens is all of this trauma, it starts to resurface. It resurfaces. And people say, I don't know where this is coming from. I ain't cheating. I ain't doing this. I ain't doing that. She on that bullshit. She da 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 da. But you don't understand. Certain things trigger the trauma. If y'all watching the movie, the, the show on Amazon, them, it's about nothing but trauma and how people deal with trauma and how that shit eat at them. But I didn't come here to upset nobody. I didn't come here to have y'all upset crying and, and all of that when you watching this video because a lot of people experience that when they watch my videos. A lot of people experience that. I came to give you hope to, so that you could understand if you are honest with each other and you are transparent with each other and you deal with the issues at hand, you can be restored, okay? But the reason I wanted to talk about this was because you don't understand why certain things are triggers for one person and not triggers for another. There was this letter that was posted in the group. And I saw one woman and she just could not understand why if, why did the woman, why was she so triggered? She could not wrap her mind around triggers and hard limits because we all have hard limits. Okay. But I'm going to read this. Here's the situation. My husband and I have been married for three years and been together for almost eight years. We got married in 2018, but in 2017, I saw pictures of hot women. That's because that's what he's browsing on Google. In the history tab of his phone. I was so shocked because I never thought that he was that type of man. I was his first girlfriend. And from what I've known from him, he's been the type to always be with one woman. Follow me. I had this perception of him as a faithful, wholesome man. Let me just say this here. Perfection does not exist in people, okay? We have to stop viewing people in this. When we view people as perfect, that's the reason we get disappointed. But I'm not making an excuse. I'm just trying to teach you that all humans have imperfection. Moving forward. He's actually academically intelligent. That is why it never came to my mind that he would be able to do something like that. And so at that time, I confronted him. He made up several excuses and lies to cover it up. But then I slammed the evidence right into his face. He still didn't accept it. When I got home, he texted me. He told me that it was all true. I tried to end the relationship right then and there, but he begged me and he cried for me not to. So days passed and we were okay again. This normally happens. This is typical. Meaning that you find a way to get over it, okay? 
But every now and then I kept asking him if he was still looking. And he kept saying no. I got pregnant. We got married. Okay. I trusted that he was not looking again until I accidentally saw something on his laptop in 2019 after we were married. And this time it was more horrible. I felt numb. I felt sick. I saw an album of women. But this time these women were not from Google. There were pictures of girls from his Facebook. Some of them I even knew. A picture of his classmates. Even a picture of his cousin. I think that was really the low blow, the picture of his cousin. Our neighbors, one of his teachers, even some of my coworkers. I felt like I was a walking zombie for the next few days. I confronted him. I asked him why. I had a lot of questions. My mind was racing, and I felt like I was not enough. That happens as well. Am I not attractive? Do you really honestly love me? I felt so betrayed. He used those pictures to turn himself on. Trust is really something not to be played with. Yes, our marriage still continues, but I never forgot it. I couldn't trust him anymore. I was paranoid. We always fight because I think that he's still doing something. I always think that whatever go. I always think that whenever he goes out to work, he's looking at the girls that work with malice. I think that he sincerely doesn't love me because if he did, why would he not be content with me? You see, I never wanted to be like this. This drains me. Mentally, it consumes me. It made my heart black. I guess when he betrayed me again and again and again... It's not the love that was broken with me, but it was the trust that was broken with me. All right. I wanted to read that. Now, I often hear women say, well, you ain't got to do nothing but cheat back. I just had a woman that sent me an inbox, a, a, a message in the inbox, and her husband was unfaithful. And she felt like, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a start me up something. I'm going to give me somebody on the side. I'm gonna make him felt what I, I'm gonna make him feel what I felt. But she sent me a message, and let me tell you something: her spirit is tormenting her so bad to the point where she is losing it mentally. And I explained to her, I explained to her, as a woman, as a white, like I'm just the type of woman. I'm not moving how you move because that's how you move. Like I'm not about to put myself in situations to where my spirit got to be vexed. So I referred her to a counselor because I felt like she needed real psychiatric help. She like she needed to lay on the couch type of counseling. But the reason I did this video is because I really wanted to show people what brokenness looks like. I really wanted to show people that you can't expect to have a happy wife, happy life and not to expect for anything to go wrong. And you get to constantly complain and nag about why your wife acting the way she acting when this is what you created? Now you got to look at this every day. And the only thing that can help you is the Lord thy God restoring. When I said 2021 marriages will be restored, I meant that. God told me that himself. That didn't come from me. That was a word from God. So let me let you know something. Restoration is possible. But both of y'all got to want it. Both of y'all got to work for it. You think me and my husband do date nights weekly for nothing? We understand the type of work that got to go in to keep the connection. You cannot afford to lose the connection. Because when you lose the connection, conversations start going on in other places. All of a sudden, you start liking the pictures. And then all of a sudden, you start commenting on the stories. Because you understand that when you comment on the stories, that goes to the inbox. Now, that was a, 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 a perfectly good, reasonable explanation for you to be in the inbox. Because you was commenting on the story. I'm saying all of this because people don't get like this, broken, because nothing happened. 
So, men, when you come into my store and you griping and complaining about how she won't do this and she won't do that, don't be offended when I ask you what happened. Because something happened. Because as women, we naturally give. We naturally nurture. We naturally go in 100% invested. We be la-la land in love. Even, even when it ain't no love there. We plan in the perfect life even when you ain't our man. Women live in fantasy all the time. So the thing is, it's natural for us to give. It's natural for us to, to want the relationship, to want the marriage, to want, want, want. Up until you get us to this point. And at that point, they're in a relationship. But guess what? They're just existing in the relationship up until restoration happens. Okay. I thought I was going to need two mirrors. But I only needed one to get the point across. I want to thank you all for watching this live today. It will be on my YouTube. Please like and share. Um, thank you all, everyone who has downloaded the April Showers video and who has watched it and gave me feedback. It's greatly appreciated. And I'll be honest with y'all, I don't really like doing lives like this, but they are necessary. And when God tells me to move, I have to move. And I have to always be obedient. Because when I told him to use me, I didn't get to pick how he used me in this adult industry. I didn't get to pick what parts of my life and relationship that I wanted to talk about and what I didn't want to talk about. When I said that I wanted to deal with married people, I knew then that even I had to be transparent. So I'm a woman that know that restoration is possible, but I know that both people have to want it and I know that both people have to work for it. Will every day be sunny? No, it will not be sunny every day. Will you still have hiccups and issues? Yes, you will still have, still have hiccups and issues. Will you be tested? Yes, you will be tested. Do you get to pick, pick the test? No, you don't get to pick the test. Will the weaker person be tested? Yes, the weaker person will be tested. That's why it's important that somebody be prayed up. You all be blessed. You all enjoy your Friday. Like, share, follow, subscribe. If this video blessed you, my cash app is on the bottom of the video. Dollar sign PPG store. You all be blessed.